What is up, guys? Uh, we are back here with another Yu-Gi-Oh! opening. This time we're going to be trying to profit from Infinite Forbidden. Infinite Forbidden came out uh, like two days ago, or like three days. I don't even know how long ago. Uh, and there are some decent cards in here. So, for example, Smith Engraver is about $100. It was $130 in pre-sales, believe it or not. But shocker to, like, literally no one with half a brain, the price went down after pre-sales. Um, and then S. Teller, the white of the white forest, is like thirty-three dollars. That actually kind of went up by like a dollar, and it's probably going to go up because the listings do look pretty short. Um, and then the white L. Z. of the white forest. These names are really weird. Is about twenty bucks. The new maxi, quote unquote, is about thirty bucks, which went down again after pre-sales. Shocker to no one. Anyways, our baseline is eighty-six bucks, as you guys can see there. I went to a mop and, mom and pop shop, and that is the price they gave me a box for. And uh, it's a little bit more expensive about like six dollars more expensive than what you will see on tcg player but i do like supporting the local stores whenever i can because you know as long as they do good shit i like it anyways we are in boys let's see if we can at least get to 86 again if we get fiends fiend smith engraver that's already like we, we made the money back uh if we get a qcr depending on the qcr we can also make our money back let's pray for a qcr boys oh man i haven't pulled a qcr in a mean set in a really long time. Let's see if, the, if today's the day. All right, we got Reflection of the Millennium. Fiendsmith Synced. Golem of the Guards of the Millennium Treasure. And then uh, Susurus of the Sinful Spoils. That is sus indeed. If you are into this archetype, sus indeed. I'm reporting you guys to the FBI. Oh, show. Anyways, uh, let's see. Moving on, moving on. Service Puppet Play, Ragnarok Gasoline, Woes of the White Forest, Beaten Bats, and then we got Mimigool Archfiend. So this is a new TCG exclusive. They do look kind of cool, but um, according to some of you guys, it is good. I just haven't really seen any gameplay of it. It's also a flip effect uh, archetype, so I don't know. Just I, I'm staying away from that mess uh, for sure. Fiendsmith... Um, La Crema, I think. Gimmick Puppet fan Fantasix Machinix. The, uh, so there's like a CXCs or whatever version of that, and it looks pretty, pretty fucking cool, but uh, uh, I'm not a Gimmick Puppet dude uh, in, in any sense. We got our first ultra here, Mimigool Master. Is this, it's about five bucks, so we're crawling our way up there. Um, so yeah, again, Mimigool, some of you guys are saying it's good. And that's why we're seeing some decent value holding for, for these cards, at, at least currently. Actually, I'm looking at TCG Player right now, and Fiendsmith Engraver QCR went down by like 100 bucks. You, you guys got to stop playing the pre-sale game, dude. Like, there are cards, like, even in this set, right? The a Stellar of the White Forest kind of went up after pre-sales, from what I remember, by a little bit, but... Usually that's not the case, man. Just have patience. Like, how? Why are you guys spending so much money? And then you guys bitch about the price of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, maybe don't buy pre-sales, man. But maybe, maybe don't do that. Jesus. Anyways, um, let's go. Deep Sea Fiend, Fiendsmith Saint, uh, Sleepy. Oh, oh, I remember this. Okay, so basically all mementos. If you guys don't know, they're kind of a retrain of. OG cards, and this is like uh, Mystic Sheep. I th I think is his name. Mystic Sheep number like two or so. They had they had numbers, uh, but that's cool. It, it has nothing to do with the original Mystic Sheep. So there we go. We got a waifu uh, LZ the White Forest. Twenty dollars. This is this isn't bad, guys. So we're at twenty five dollars, and I mean not halfway to the baseline, but uh, you know we're, we're we are crawling our way out of here. The moon. Of the closed heavens, I actually haven't seen the price. I'm assuming it's just a very cheap card, even though it is going to be decent in some decks um, because it's a common, right? It should have been a super rare. Honestly, I think it would have been a really nice super. It would have been a value super because I don't think there's any super rares in, in here, in this set in particular, that have value, um, unfortunately. But uh, Fiendsmith, something or other, Drytron, Metonius, Da... Draconids. 
yo, these names are in this set in particular are really freaking weird, man. What is going on? All right, so I think we're missing one more ultra. As far as ultras go, I think the Tenpai Dragon might be the most expensive, sitting at about eight bucks. Uh, yeah, okay, so that is what we're trying to go for, I guess. Okay, we got Exodia Obliterate, uh, two bucks, so we're at $27 on, uh, on the right side so far. That's, ooh, ooh, can we pull Fiend, Fiendsmith Engraver on the other side? That would be amazing. Or QCR, I mean, come on out. We can still pull a QCR on this side. Um... Yeah, I don't think there's, like, a set place for the QCR. I know some of you guys, I've seen some videos where, like, people are saying, oh, it's mappable. I don't think QCRs are mappable. Um, yeah, I, I just I haven't uh, I haven't seen that myself. Anyways, a Lord of the Missing Borrows. Cool. All right, that's that's 10. The hell is that? Uh, one of those Life Twin Chicks. Anyways, second side. We're at 27 bucks. Let's see if we can we can do a little bit more, man. A little bit more. We got another sus, sussy, sussy, sucky, sucky. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I hope the uh, the moon chick at least like a two dollar common would be cool just to get some value back. But uh, I, I don't know. Anyways, D DPH uh, Gandamore. Wait, whoa! I I don't think I've seen that in a main set before. I, I pulled three susses, three super rare susses. That is crazy. Okay, okay, that is cool. It, it would have been nice back in the um, Legacy of Destruction, right? I think that the the last sets with the Ten Pi Dragons, if you can do that, pulling the super rare Ten Pi Dragon. That was like fifteen bucks, but it was like two. I was, I think it was six per case, believe it or not. So they are shorting super rares, like definitely. Um, but can you imagine a box with three of those ten pine dragons, man? You would have made your money back just on the super rares. Oh boy! All right, Cosmo, Cosmo Queen, uh, another sleepy there, and then uh, Woodha Temple. I don't think this is worth anything, so I'm just gonna say we're still at like twenty seven bucks because. I mean, I don't see it on the front page, first of all. And also, it's it's an Exodia support. And if the if the cover card Exodia is 2 bucks, it's probably not that expensive. So, we're still at 27 boys. We'll keep it at that. Come on, give me a good secret rare. I will even settle for the new Max C, which people were, you know, bitching about. Because Yu-Gi-Oh! players bitch about everything. Um, it's not... It's good, but uh, Max C is... Like, you can play around Max C, bro. And Max C is really not the problem. I think Ash is a problem, more of a problem than Max C, to be honest, because you you can play around Ash, but most decks, if, if the if you Ash their their search, dude, they, they ain't doing shit. Uh, Beats and bats, uh, something of the white forest, um, Dolce dessert, and then a wicked wicked butterfly. That is awesome. Uh, you know they they couldn't they couldn't. Uh, Go by without making a freaking waifu in the Ragnarika archetype. I swear they every archetype will be will be infested with waifus, given given some time. Fiendsmith sequence. A lot of these. Oh, well, there it is. These guys were sticking together. The cattle scream. Uh, and and the, this is the new Max C, which I'm gonna read, guys, because yeah, you guys are th crazy thinking this is gonna be op op. So if you control no cards, quick effect. You can discard this card, apply these effects this turn. Uh, each time your opponent normal or special summons a monster from the hand. That's the key difference here. Uh, immediately draw one card. So that's where ma the, the maxi effect is. And then once per once during the end phase, you know, the number of cards in your hand is more than the number of cards your opponent controls, plus six. Uh, so I guess you, you are allowed if, if you're going second and you activate this you are allowed a, a plus one at, at the very least um and then after that you it, it depends on what your opponent has left on the board uh during the end phase but uh, I, i'm not gonna read the, the 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 other effects there basically why i think this card it was kind of overblown is that you have to special summon from the hand like a lot of archetypes they special summon from the graveyard they special summon from the um from the uh, extra deck, right? Maybe not necessarily from the hand. Maybe, maybe per turn, 
I can see like two cards being summoned, special summoned from the hand, but yeah, it's not that crazy, man. The new one, there's another one coming out. I think that one will actually be, be uh, pretty busted. Um, you know, more comparable to Maxi, but not, not that one. You guys were jumping the shark on that one. Anyways, uh, yeah, so can we do a QCR? Come on, man, make this, make this box busted. Oh, wait, what are, what, what are we at? We were at like 26 plus 30-ish. So 20, uh, I think 27, actually. That is 57. So we need a good ultra rare. Uh, Tenpai Dragon. Come on. Aerial Eater. I feel like this is the, the ultra rare as well. Okay, it's not Mimikul. Dragon. Okay, okay. The uh, Light and Darkness Dragons, too, are kind of disappointing, which kind of sucks. Because I, I did want them to be um, kind of broken, to be honest. Um, and, and honestly, they kind of need to be because they didn't get that much support. Um, but yeah, nope, nothing. Okay, so Dark Magician, the Magician of Black Magic. That I think that's like two bucks from what I remember. Let's yeah, oh, so three bucks. We were at 57, an even 60 with this Dark Magician. Honestly, though, I might, I might want a QCR version of this. So yeah, the artwork is pretty nice. I, I ain't even gonna lie. People were bitching about that too because they were like, oh, why. Why is that little you? Why is the little Yugi archetype getting another like a dark magician instead of keeping it separate from the Pharaoh's deck? But I mean, I I dig it. Uh, Valmonica Concord and then a Cosmic Tree. All right, come on, man. QCR at the very last pack would be gold here. Paralyzing Mushroom. Okay, interdimensional matter transporter. Sleepy. Ah, uh, dark magic. Mirror Force with the the new Dark Magician there. Anyways, okay, so we did not break even. We were 26, I think, dollars shy of breaking even. But I like this set, guys, because if you pull Engraver, like you're, you're guaranteed like free blisters after that. So, yes, I'm going to be I, – I didn't find any blisters, but I will try to find some blisters and do some more openings. Guys, catch you guys in the next one.